Let us solve a question on homogeneous production functions. This question was asked in UGC Net Economics paper of 2023. The question is, suppose production function Q, which is a function of capital and labor, is homogeneous of degree 1. Consider the following statements. Marginal product of capital and labor, that is, the partial derivative of production function with respect to capital and partial derivative of the production function with respect to labor, are homogeneous of degree 1. The second order cross marginal products of capital and labor are equal. That means uh, the second derivatives are equal. Um, third, uh, you know, statement is by Euler's theorem, uh, dQ upon dK times K plus dQ upon dL is, uh, times L is equal to Q. And the last, uh, you know, part is by Euler's theorem, again, this thing is equal to zero. We need to find out which of these, of, you know, statements are correct. Okay, so what we are being told, we are being told we are being given a production function which is homogeneous of degree 1. Okay, by homogeneity, what we mean if we have a function, and let me write it here, if we have a function f of kl, okay, we say this function is homogeneous of degree 1 when, when if we increase both capital and labor by same proportion and if we get lambda common and then we have f of kl and the power of lambda is 1 we say this production function is homogeneous of degree uh, 1 if we increase both the inputs by a same factor and if we get uh, the result is the factor raised power 1 times the ordinal production function we say the given production function is homogeneous of degree one okay so let me rub this now first part tells us the marginal product of the capital and labor are homogeneous of degree one we need to check whether this uh, statement is correct or not for this let's take a simple cob dogs production function let us say q is equal to f of kl Okay, production is a function of capital and labor. And let us take a simple, uh, you know, Cobb Douglas production function that is k to the power alpha, l to the power beta, where alpha plus beta is equal to 1, alpha plus beta is equal to 1. Because we are being told that this is, uh, you know, we have a homogeneous production function of degree 1. That means the sum of the exponents should be equal to 1. That means alpha plus beta is equal to here 1. Now, we need to verify this statement, whether it is correct or not. Okay. Now, let's take the marginal product. Okay. And let me write it here. Marginal product of, uh, let's say, we take capital. What is the marginal product of capital? That is simply the partial derivative of production function with respect to capital. And let us see what will we get. So the derivative of k to the power alpha, alpha will become coefficient k and alpha is subtracted by 1, l to the power beta, okay? This is our marginal product of capital. And symmetrically, we can find out the marginal product of labor, which is the partial derivative of production function with respect to l, okay? Now, this time we partially differentiate with respect to L. So, the exponent of the L will become coefficient. So, we have beta k to the power alpha and L to the power beta minus 1. Okay. What we need to see here, marginal product of capital and labor are homogeneous of degree 1. Now, let's take the marginal product of capital first. And let us see whether it is homogeneous of degree 1 or not. That means if we increase both you know, capital and labor by a same factor, let us say lambda, what will happen to the production function? And let us say MPK, MPK, and MPK is a function of capital and labor. We know that this function, MPK is a function of capital and labor. Let us increase this by lambda L, lambda K, and let's increase the, uh, you know, labor by lambda L. What will happen? So, given this MPK, if we increase both capital and labor by same factor uh, lambda, what will happen here? We have alpha. Uh, in place of K, we have lambda. Lambda K to the power alpha minus 1. And in place of L, we have again lambda L to the power beta. Okay? 
if we solve this what will happen here and let me write it here it will become alpha lambda raised power alpha minus one okay if we expand this then we have lambda raised power beta l to the power beta okay here we have also k let me rewrite it so we have alpha lambda raised power alpha minus one then we have k to the power alpha minus one then we have lambda raised power beta and l to the power beta okay now we have lambda and lambda here we can write it in this fashion lambda raised power alpha minus one bases are same we can add up the exponent so alpha minus one plus beta then we have alpha k to the power alpha minus one l to the power beta okay and this will sum up, uh, sum up to alpha plus beta and we can rewrite it as alpha plus beta minus one uh, alpha k to the power alpha minus one l to the power beta okay alpha plus beta as we know it is equal to one so what will we get we will get lambda raised power one minus one uh, okay lambda raised power one minus one this function is our marginal product of capital so i can write it as m p k which is a function of capital and labor now what is this lambda we can write lambda raised power zero m p k capital and labor so what has happened here when we increase both capital and labor by same factor okay our uh, you know mpk increased by lambda raised power zero okay since by a factor lambda raised power zero that means uh, when that is the marginal product of capital is homogeneous of degree zero here okay so it came out to be uh, lambda raised power zero mpk mpk which is a function of capital and labor obviously the given statement is not correct okay if uh, that is uh, the marginal product of capital and labor are homogeneous of degree zero in this case so the first option is not correct it should be homogeneous of degree zero not homogeneous of degree one now comes the second uh, statement the second order cross marginal products of capital and labor are equal okay let us verify whether this statement is correct or not and let's take this very production function so we have taken the first order uh, here so let me write it here if i have space and let me write it here we have to take the second order cross marginal products this is the first order uh, you know derivative this is also and here we can also you know check for marginal product of labor i have left that very thing for you to uh, you know verify now we need to check the second order cross marginal products of capital and labor are equal this is the first part uh, derivative now second order derivative will be let me write it here d square q divided by dl dk okay that means we partially differentiate this production function with respect to capital to get the second order cross partials okay so we differentiate this function with respect to k so the uh, you know exponent of k will become coefficient so we will get alpha into beta k to the power alpha beta sorry uh, l to the power beta minus one and similarly for uh, this d square q upon dk dl that is d square uh, q upon del k del k del l let us see what it comes out to be del k del l del k del l that means we need to differentiate this partially with respect to l this time okay so again beta will become coefficient by power function rule we will get alpha beta here we have k to the power uh, alpha minus one and we will get l to the power beta minus one okay so let me see if i have uh, done it correctly or not 
so here we got d square q d l d k d l d k so k sorry here it is alpha minus one again alpha minus one okay i have made a mistake here here you can see these are equal that is the second order cross model products of uh, you know capital and labor are equal it is by youngest theorem also okay by by youngest theorem youngest theorem says that the second order cross partials of a function are equal so this option is correct let's come to the third option by euler's theorem this stuff is true and let us see what exactly is meant by it says uh, by product of exhaustion theorem we say that total factor will get exhausted if the factors are paid according to their marginal products this statement is true and let's prove it here first okay so dq upon dk is the marginal product of capital dq upon dk which we got alpha k to the power alpha minus 1 l to the power beta to this we need to multiply by k plus dq upon dl this marginal product of labor which is beta beta k to the power alpha l to the power beta minus 1 and we you know we are you know verifying the lhs here okay and to this we multiply the labor l so let us uh, see what will happen so we have alpha k to the power here we have k to the power alpha minus 1 and we multiply it with k bases are same we can add the, the exponent so we will get alpha minus 1 plus alpha okay exponent is here minus 1 plus 1 will get canceled so we will be left with k to the power alpha okay so we are left with k to the power alpha some g shin yama yet kya jasa yet l to the power beta tur shitiza actually it is very chilly and cold here that's why i'm getting you know a little bit of nervous plus and by same logic here we have k to the power alpha and sorry l to the power beta minus 1 l to the power beta minus 1 times l so here l to the power beta minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 gets cancelled we will get l to the power beta plus beta k to the power alpha l to the power beta here we got and we can write it let's take k to the power this um, common uh, l to the power beta common we are left with alpha plus beta alpha plus beta and we know that alpha plus beta sums up to one because it is the production function which is homogeneous of degree one so we will get k to the power alpha l to the power beta which is equal to q okay so we have proven lhs came out to be this stuff which is equal to rhs that means this option is true and this option cannot be true we did not get a result which is equal to zero and by this what we are being told a simple thing if the product is you know if the product is if the products are sorry product exhaustion theorem okay we say that product total product will get exhausted if the factors are paid according to their marginal products okay i hope i make myself clear in this video so the correct answer uh, according to my knowledge should be uh, the correct option should be b and c okay b and c okay so please verify i'm just doing it you know if there is some mistake you can point out if i have done it uh, you know incorrectly or not thank you